You know, I'm so glad that silhouette because I'm biting my lip the whole time. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> the worst dancer oh, ever, man. I like, and you don't really play the guitar. I don't actually play guitar. I, I play piano and I, I sing and stuff, but never learn guitar. That guitar was broken, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that guitar It's all broken. an act. Yeah. yeah. No. Anyway, welcome. Uh, I'm Steven. I'm Lex. And PowerShell uh, to, uh, you know, remote sites. And that's different than remote computers, but remote sites where you don't have DFS and you got like slow uh, internet connection. Yeah. Or uh, MPLS or whatever it is. You know, your slow connection will show you how to actually get your packages there and deploy from a local copy. Yeah, so, so this came out of my, my previous job was a construction company and we had a kind of unique problem because we had like um, over 60 different job sites um, and most of them had really bad internet because they're a job site they didn't have like a line running to them. A lot of them had uh, Verizon, air like wire, air card, yeah. exactly. And so I came up with a solution to cache um, package files on a server or computer at each remote site and then um, deploy from that server to the computers at that site so that files would only get copied to the site once. Now, originally you did this with Auto Hotkey, but now you're doing it yeah. with PowerShell. It's a lot more elegant, maybe? Yeah, at the time I didn't really, I wasn't very familiar with PowerShell and I used Auto Hotkey, which is what I did a lot of scripting with at the time. But we've updated it to PowerShell and we are going to show you how Let's, it works. Let's uh, take you to the other side and do it, yeah? yeah. Do it. All right. So the first thing, obviously, is getting the package out there yep. and finding the closest version of that package, right? Because yeah. you've got 60 sites. Yeah. So we need to figure out, um, so what, what's what we're going to do? Step one, mm -hmm. we're going to send a deployment to the target computer. Okay. The target computer is going to ping a list of servers to find which one is at the, at the local uh, okay. site. And then once it does that, it's going to robocopy the files to that local server, and then it's going to robocopy from the server to the target machine. And then if you were to do it again from that another machine do it again, at that site? The site's going to check and see that the files are already there on the server, so it won't copy again. So how already do, ready are you going to show us how to determine which is the closest server? Is that the first thing we're going to yep. do? Okay. So step one, um, I've broken this up into two separate packages. Um, package one is get closest server. And right now, I th all it does is, is just run the PowerShell PowerShell script. So should, should we pop that open? Take a look. Let's pop it open. Pop. All right. Boop. That's the brig. The brig. <laughs> boop. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Get close to server. Um, we're gonna go through a lot of scripts today. Sorry if it's a little dense. Um, this will all be shared in the bonus content. So you actually can, grab it and read along. It'll yeah. Help. Read along. Uh, you can use it. I'll try to make them like reusable. So you just have to update a few variables. Um, okay. So first, it, we have a list of the possible servers, and it's just a text file. Um, I'm going to show you our test list. So here in the office, what I did is we have one computer that's here local, Mr. MeSeeks, and then I just put in some other domains that are that are going to be farther away just to demonstrate. Okay. Yeah, it's, it'll find the closest one and use but that. Normally, you'd use all your servers in that list. Yeah, okay. you'd put all the servers like one, choose one computer from each remote site, mm -hmm. and then and then put them in the list. So after that, it's just going to, the PowerShell gets the list of servers, it loops through them, and then here it does a ping to each computer, and it does it five times. I also am running this, yeah. Why do you do it five times? Um, you really just need a test to see what works in your environment. You, I mean, is it like an average? I mean, in case there's like one that's just yeah. out there or yeah. something? Yeah, we're going to average them to get the, the average response time to the different servers. Okay. So maybe you want to do more if you have like a really unstable connection. But generally speaking, the one computer that's at your local site is just going to be drastically faster than any remote Are we computer. able to show this? Can we run this? Yeah, let's run it. Um, so it, well, it's going to go down here. It's going to get the ping list. because it's So it's okay. going to run it as a job, which okay. means it's going to run them all simultaneously. So you don't have to wait for like a million this pings to all one, your different one, okay. servers. Run them all at once. And then it's going to collect them all together, and it's going to populate this ping list. So let's run up to this point. So we got this list. You can see that the local ones are all zero, and everything farther away is is significantly more than yeah. zero. Yep. So it's pretty obvious at this point. You're going to average this out, and it's going to find gonna Mr. Meeks. Mr. Meeks is clearly or the Me closest Me one. Meeks. Meeks. Yeah. Uh -huh. From Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, I need to get up on my culture. <laughs> but what else is oh, new, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Um, uh, a few things to to mention. So. This does require that your remote sites are VPN, uh, that they're on the same network. Um, 
just so that so same subnet, right? So when they attach yeah. their it actually doesn't have to be the same subnet. It just oh. has to be routable on the same network. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then it groups some. This is where it averages everything. Okay. And then it'll sort the average, and then it'll return the closest server. Do we need to uh, comment out the uh, ping list that we let's, did earlier? Let's comment that just out. Just because I remember that playing that yesterday. The yeah, log was like psh, make things psh, different. Make things weird. But let's uh, let's write out to this point. Okay. Right to this point. So it pings everything, gets the list, averages each host name, pops up the closest one. Ready surprise, surprise. Yeah. And then the last part of the script, it saves the value of the host name to an environment variable called PDQ closest server. Now, what you, you did that so that you could actually use that in subsequent packages and steps. So you could just yep. call that instead of having to run that every time on everything. Exactly. So we send off this package to get the closest server. We save it as an environment variable. And so that variable is going to be like st is going to stay on that target machine. So we can make reports to find um, mm -hmm. the closest servers of your computers, and we can run different packages afterwards to deploy using that that closest server as like a jumping point to cache your files. Very cool. Do we have a question or anything we want to take right at this point? Dear Lex and Stephen, are there any security concerns doing the PowerShell deployments over DFS deployments? What about network bandwidth usage? Thanks, Kurt M. Security concerns. Hmm. Boy, I'm, I'm thinking, OK, so over DFS. Now, DFS, you're replicating to a file share. Uh -huh. This is a completely different route of going. I mean, we're going to copy it out to, I and mean, you'll see where we're going to end up doing it. but. Security-wise, as long as I think you're... Because you're still copying on over your own network. Uh -huh. You're not going Out, through around. a public um, internet connection. So it should be as secure as any other copy method that you'd be using. through. I would, I would think yeah. it would be. So Yeah, I can't think of any security concerns. I can't. So. And if anybody, any of the, the crew out in the chat, you know, any of our guys out there have any concerns about that, please pop up and yeah. let us know. So. And then you also mentioned bandwidth usage. Um, the whole point of this is to minimize bandwidth usage. Absolutely. The whole idea is that you, you copy stuff to your remote site only once to that cache server, and then subsequent deployments that use the same files will just grab yeah. them from that, from that closest yeah. server. That, we'll show you how and that we'll, works. We'll show you now. All right. Okay, so we got our saved as an environment variable. Uh, I'm going to minimize this, and let's run just this first package on a few machines just to show you what's going to happen. So we're going to run it to Rick, Morty, and Plumbus. Plumbus. Plumbus? That's another Rick and Morty. Thing. Oh, all right. Yeah, everyone has a Plumbus <clears throat> in there. Okay, so, you know, here's the thing. You know, normally we have, go ahead and run it. Okay, run But it. normally we would scan afterwards just doing an application scan. To get environment variables, in the case that we want to see this in inventory, you're going to need to make sure you add, either add to your um, application scan the environment variables, which we did earlier is right there mm -hmm. so that you grab those on that scan or you have to run a different scan to make sure that you grab these yep. and the, the standard scan does already scan for environment it, variables. it does grab that so let's close <coughs> that and three computers so scanning Morty's running if we look up here we have this environment variable section and so as soon as it finished it's finished we should see our variable PDQ closest server is Mr. Meeseeks so now you can actually so, script and pull that environment variable from that machine. Absolutely. Awesome. One cool thing is I made a report earlier to show the closest server of our machines. Uh, let's select the all computers. And as you can see, all these computers that we've deployed to, we can see that Mr. Meeseeks is the closest server. So if you're trying to figure out where your machines are in your environment, because if you have a lot of different job sites like my previous um, job, you can just easily see where they all are. Okay. Very cool. Moving on to the next step. So we get the closest server, save it as an environment variable. Our next thing is going to... I just want to know, it. the reason you made that in and of itself is so you can nest that pack and you run it any time exactly. you do a deployment? Exactly. So this is going to actually copy the files and then run the install command. Mm -hmm. And it's going to just call this first as a nested package. So let's open this up. Very first, get the closest server. Save it as an environment variable. Now, the nice thing about that is if a machine moves from site to site to site, when it gets this, it'll change the yep. closest computer. It'll update before copying the files. Which is exactly. awesome. So, pre-cache the files. Most of the script I have saved in the PS1 file, and then all I put in here is just the, the variables that you need to update. Um, we need to put the install folder. So, in this demonstration, we're going to show you how you'd install Google Chrome. 
And I actually just used the files from our package library. So I, I got the Google Chrome package, mm -hmm. and then I just put in the paths and the file name here into the variables. So it'll use the, the files from the package library. Um, the repo path, this is just the folder that we're going to copy to on, on the target machines and on the, um, the cache server. And then the repository variable, which is already a PDQ variable. So, so let me show you the full thing now. So here's the pre cat. Okay, so this is what you're calling. Yep. In that. Okay. Yep. So uh, what it's going to do, there's two functions in here. The first function that runs is check files and copy. So what it does is it is it first it makes sure that there is an environment variable. Because if there isn't, then it doesn't know what to do. It'll just fail. Okay. And then it checks to see if the files, the, the install files, already exist on the target machine. Because at my previous job, I like to leave the files on the target machines unless I needed to remove them for disk space issues. But if they needed to reinstall it, or if they, if I needed to copy it to another local machine, are you machine. checking? I mean, what, you know, Google Chrome comes out. There's Chrome install, Chrome install. Do you check yeah. dates? Do you check versions? Absolutely. So it'll check to make sure that the files exist. If they do, it'll check to see if they have the same name and modified time. And that's the machine, the actual uh, file modified time, not the exactly. copy time. Okay. File modified time. So if, if the file's different, it'll copy a new copy to make sure you have the latest one. So after it checks that, it'll call the other function, robocopy files. And the robocopy files will, um, I, put, I put a sleep at the beginning, because sometimes there can be collisions, or and it'll, it'll just retry. So um, it's like if you launch out two, de two uh, deployments, and they're both trying yeah. to the files. You're trying exist. to like send to 10 computers at one remote site at once. One will create a lock file. The first one will create a lock file, and the others will wait until that lock file disappears. Once, it, once one has been copied, um, RoboCopy is a really cool tool, and it has this XO flag. So it's only going to copy files if, if they're different. Okay. If the file's already there, it'll just skip right through. So the idea is if you copy your first computer, uh, your first one, it'll copy the files to the cache server. Your next ones will see that it's already there, and it'll just skip to it, and it'll copy from the cache server to the target machine without recopying on the... To the cache server. To the cache server. Okay. Hence the one copy yep. to your site. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you can read through this. Uh, um, so, uh, before yeah. we, do we have any other questions? This is a good time for a question. Dear Lex and Stephen, will deployments work with remote sites if the domain name is different from the main PDQ central server? Meaning, will I have to change my background service user per site, or what would you recommend doing for successful deployments? Thanks, Angel P. That's going to depend on your deployment, because the yeah. deployment's going to run as whatever you've got it selected as in deploy. Exactly. Now, if you've got inventory, and you've got you know the different sites, and you use the uh, scan user from inventory, that exactly. should take care of it for you. That's how I would do it. Exactly. So this is, it's just using the same like methods as before. We're just doing like PowerShell steps in a deployment. So it's going to use the same credentials, the same, mm -hmm. the same things as a, as a normal deployment. The idea is we're just using scripts to like move, move files, files around, around more yeah. efficiently. So. Excellent. Cool. Okay, I'm just going to run this really quick. All it's going to show us is it's going to check to see if the file needs to be copied uh, to our target machine, which is this machine. Do we have the, the repository on the target machine we can take a look at? So I save the repository here oh, okay. as, as uh, this computer yeah, that we're running here, okay, on. from the console. And so it's actually going to check to see, it's going to see if it needs to copy to itself, okay. since it, this is the target machine and the repository. Okay. And it's just going to see it's the same file, so no need to copy. Let's see it in action now. Uh, let me show you the third step really quick. It'll just run the install. The files are there locally. The so the um, we're just, this one's an MSI. Google's an MSI, so it'll copy to or it'll run the MSI exec with the commands. Uh, to and then your MSI. parameters are all put in there, and yep. it should run basically like you would see the standard package run. Only you're just calling it for commands at this point. Exactly. Okay, let's do it. So let's deploy it to the same ones, Rick. Morty, Columbus, and we are using MeSeq as, as our cache server. So I'm going to kick this off, and then I want to watch it. So it's going to pop up in Mr. MeSeq. So is it going to copy the entire directory? You told it to copy the entire directory so it looks like the repository? 
Um, so you get like a Google directory. This time we actually told it to copy the single, um, uh, the MSI file. Okay. You can tell it to do the whole directory if you want by just putting in a, like a star. Okay. So now I thought while that's running, uh, what about if you were doing like uh, Office? You're pushing Office. There's a lot of files to copy. Yeah. Then you'd probably just want to send the whole folder over or you can specify each file individual if you don't want to send the whole directory I'm over. I'm lazy. I want one command. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> put in the asterisk. Send the whole thing. Send them all? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like uh, if we drag this guy back up top here, yep. there's, a, there's a Google file, yep. or at least the folder. And let's see. So we see the file copied. It looks like it's still running. So it's on step three. It's actually installing. Doing the installs Chrome. now. Yeah. Okay. So in a minute, we should see Chrome show up. So it looks like it did on Plumbus. And we have yeah, there's Chrome, Chrome now. And yeah, let's look at the steps. So step one, it found the closest server, which is Mr. Meeseeks, as we expected. Step two, copied the files. Um, we can see that the, it checked to see if the file was already there. It wasn't, not found. Copying is normal. So it did the robocopy. And so we can see that it actually skipped the file because it, it found it that it was already on the cache server. It was already on Mr. Meeseeks. Um, Plumbus probably wasn't the first one to copy, a different one was the first one. So that one was skipped, but then it copied from Mr. Meesek to localhost right there. Now, when you wrote this script, I mean, obviously the, the, I like the logging on this because you can see everything that happens. Yeah. Did you have to, I mean, script all that for the logging or is this just RoboCopy spits this out for you? Well, it's a mix of both. Oh, is it? Okay. So, so RoboCopy does just spit out everything that it's doing. Um, but I, I like to see like every step, like what's happening, and especially for troubleshooting. Um, this one I put in, it just says like it checks for the MSI and localhost. It's not there, so that's why it, it makes a message about that. Okay, so that's all that for that, and then run install that finished, and Chrome's installed. It's it's really pretty simple, and uh, and quick when it's working when you so, got it all set up. So at this point, it's cached out on Mr. Meesey exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we got to pick some names I can remember. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> if I were to deploy this right now to another machine, mm -hmm. we would see I don't need to copy it, and it would just deploy from exactly. copy from me. Well, yep. Let's, okay, let's, we, I'll show you. I want to pick one. Okay. So um, what are we sending to? Um, I don't know the names of all the ones out there. We'll choose some targets, my friend. Perfect. Um, mm -mm, let's see. Chrome. <laughs> Anybody got Chrome old? Anybody? Tiny Rick, maybe. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna update Tiny Rick. Yep. Using our non DFS, it's already out yep. there. It's cached at the okay. closed server. Won't need to copy out again. So again, the initial the the initial copy may take some time, but after that, it's yeah. Boom. So this grabbing. this one should go quick because it doesn't need to copy the first the first hop. It just needs to copy from the cache server. It's gonna go verify closed yep. machine. Exactly. Files are out there. Copy the files to yep. Tiny Rick from the local copy, and then we, we should probably check to make sure Tiny Rick's online because I think did, we had this problem. Kill, oh, he's no, there. Tiny okay. Rick's there. Okay, it should be good. <laughs> we, we did it yesterday. I'm like, Try this one, and I pick one that doesn't even exist. So, um, I wonder if Tiny Rick's got an agent. Nope, it's looks internal. like it is internal. Oh, it is. Does have an agent? I'm going to remote over to him just so we can take a look. Living live here, huh? Password one. That's a lot okay. of letters for password one. Yeah. <laughs> so the other interesting thing is, so um, you know, I go visit a lot of uh, clients, and uh, you know, Steve was one of the clients. I went out there. I'm like, so show me what you're doing. And I've seen all kinds of things, and he showed me this. And I'm like, <laughs> holy crap, man! I mean, I, yeah, I, I just think this is fun. We had a problem, and I just think it's and then it was, script solutions. Hmm. Come to a basketball game, and then <laughs> we said, "Come work for us." Yep, and here I am. Yeah, Kobe, any thoughts, man? Uh, everything sounds good so far. Sounds good so far. Is it working? Running smooth. All? Yeah. Any questions or anything? Dear Lex and Stephen, how can you set throttling for the transfer? Sincerely, Slash Q. Welcome to the jungle, Slash. So, um. I'm pretty sure RoboCopy has built-in throttling, but I'm not 100% sure about that. That would be your only option is if, do we know? 
What, a robocopy? This is what I do. Well, I'll just show you because um, we'll just pull up the command prompt and we're going to look at robocopies commands. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. And I kind of thought you could, but I'm not 100% sure. I got to get better eyes. I can't, I can't read that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if I look down here, I can, but yeah. So, I, I don't short know. answer, not sure. Not sure. Um, if you can with RoboCopy, I thought you could, then then you could. Or there's there's probably other copy utilities you could use instead of RoboCopy that, that you... Okay, so I, I guess there's a couple of instances where you may have to have an issue. So the copy, right? So mm -hmm. let's say the first copy across the VPN. Mm -hmm. That, if you're doing a push from deploy, you can throttle it at the, the NIC from the console. But I don't know if that's going to throttle, I mean throttle it according to the VPN. And then there's a copy from the local copy to mm -hmm. the... That one probably doesn't need to be throttled. You're probably more concerned about the bandwidth to get to your remote site. That's where I would be Most concerned. Likely. But yeah, uh, yeah I don't, uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure yeah. on that one. Colby, any thoughts? Throttling? Bandwidth? Uh, it looks like the parameter you were thinking of is IPG, inter-packet gap. Oh, yeah. So the, the answer is yes. Thank you, Colby. Sweet. <laughs> so yeah. Check that one out. Apparently yep. you can. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> nice. Uh, any other questions at this point? Lex and Steven, could you have it use two computers at a remote site for redundancy in case one goes down? Thanks, Brian G. Yeah, sure. All, all you'd have to do is in that text file of all your servers, you would just put two servers per site. Um, and again, it'll be chosen by ping time. So if one is usually like more responsive, or I don't, maybe one has a better connection. So what if the they network. both if they both pull a zero, man? You'd script it, just pull the first one, just yeah. pull the first from the list. Yeah, exactly. And so. then that would take care of the uh, ping time. Yeah. At that point. But yeah, that would totally work. You could even, I mean, you'd have to modify the script. Maybe you could have a copy to both of them every time. Um, there's definitely some options you could do with that. But yeah, that would totally work. Absolutely. So let's check on our tiny rig. Uh oh, something wrong with tiny rig. Hey, let's so this is the guy? troubleshooting portion <laughs> yeah. of our show today. <laughs> I really wonder what happened. Computer unreachable. So we just try a different one. Yeah, pick something else. Okay. You know, I'm I'm batting Did a thousand. Use? I bet you I can pick another one. <laughs> okay. No, you pick it this time because oh. every time I pick one, they don't work. So. Well, let's try a different Chrome old. Should we do uh, Rick Sanchez? No. Nope. Don't <laughs> touch that one. Don't touch Rick Sanchez. Send it to uh, Alan Rails. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we don't mess with Rick Sanchez. Yes. Yeah. So JJ's over there. No. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the machine that sends your stream out. So yeah, they'll actually watch this. Oh, thing. check it out. Yeah, you that one's working. It works. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, so we can well, we can actually see this as it's happening. So the output log obviously it's found Mr. Meek. Me 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 I can't. Mr. Even Meeks. I was going to call him Meeks. Meeks. Mr. Meeks. Meeks. And you'd be wrong. <laughs> So this one, this step pre-cache took seven seconds because Perfect. so it's not found on the local host. So it copies to the cache server. It gets skipped. It's already there. But then the second copy mm -hmm. from Mr. Meeseeks local host copied. Nice. So now you, if you were to install. redo this because there's already a copy on there, would skip, skip, and just jump to the install spot. Yes, I'll show you that too. Okay. In, in the case. And again, okay, so. <sighs> You gotta explain to me why. I mean, I just I want clean. I want just get rid of it. And the reason you kept it was just because usually, like bandwidth was more rare than disk space. Okay. So like we we did a lot of Bluebeam at my last job, and they were like a gig installer. So we'd copy the Bluebeam to a target machine, and I usually just like to keep it there in case I needed it again. Like if someone else at their same job site needed it and I hadn't cached it, I wouldn't have to copy that whole gig file again. Just go find just, one. Just copy it over. Um, but it really is, maybe in your situation, it makes more sense to clean up. It would be really simple just to put a, a command at the end of the script to uh, remove item and then the path to of the files that you copied. So it would be really easy to clean up if you want to. So that command is remove, remove C colon item. backslash star. Star. Force, Windows. Windows System32. There you go. Yeah. Just hit the DLLs along the way, right? For those yeah. that are following along, please don't. <laughs> don't. All right, don't that, don't that is a don't do that. Yeah, we're, we're joking. That is a joke. To be clear, a bad joke. Yeah. So, do we, do we have another question while this? Well, it's uh, actually finished. It's finished. 
So you're going to run that again? So, we're so see that I'll run first? it a second time. Or do we want to do a oh, question first? Question. Yeah. Dear Lex and Stephen, did you use any mechanism to ensure file integrity of your repository on the server? The slow connection and larger files would be a concern. Thanks, Jarrett Ohl. That's a very good point. That is a really good point. Um, in this script, I did not do anything to verify the integrity. Uh, the only thing I checked for was the name and the, um, the modified date. And then RoboCopy just looks at the date as well. So to do an integrity check, you can do um, spacing on the command. Uh, get file hash? Exactly. You can get, a get, get file hash of the two files. That would be an easy way to compare. Mm -hmm. Probably be the best way. And then if it didn't work, just force a recopy. That's what I would do. Yeah, good question. Good that's, that is a very good point, especially yeah. in large files. And, and on the slow connections, absolutely, that can definitely happen. Okay, so I'm going to redeploy to this same computer. And this is why I don't like to clean up unless I need to, because, I don't know, if something breaks and they need a, uh, a redeploy, everything's already ready to go. And, and like you said, space was cheaper than bandwidth. In this exactly. Point, so. yeah. All right, you made your point. I still like to clean up. Yeah, and I hear you. It might make more sense in a lot of cases to clean up. Again, if, if disk space is an issue, you'd want to clean up. But yeah. But that gig file, how many of those did you have out there? Uh, a lot. A lot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can see in this step two, all it's going to do, the same file, no need to copy. It'll just move on to the next step. The file's ready to go, and it'll install it again. You do it. Yeah. Very cool. Very easy. So a couple minutes left. Do we have any more questions? Dear Lex and Stephen, if we are talking about a DFS alternative and remote sites with low bandwidth, isn't it too risky to use the PowerShell version? If the bandwidth is fully used at the remote side and the moment of deploy, the ping would come back much worse as from other remote sites. Christian B. Okay, can we leave that one up for a second? Mm -hmm. Bandwidth is fully used at the remote site. So, this is a good question. When you, when you deploy the script, it, it runs at the local computer. Yes, I was going to say. It's going to ping all the servers. If the bandwidth is being used up, all the remote servers are going to be really high. But the one or two servers that are there at the local site should be pretty close to what, zero. Even, even then, okay, so you hit the site, you get, it's in the site pinging internal yep, machines exactly. and going out. Exactly. So even if the internal is taking 20 milliseconds, getting out to the external is going to take 20 milliseconds plus. Plus, exactly. So you're still going to end up with the closest yeah. server in this case. Yeah. And hence the reason you ran it so many times for an average, too. Exactly, so. yeah. And you definitely should do some testing in your Absolutely. in your site because at my old job it was very very consistent, even surprisingly consistent. Because I always expected like there would be problems and it would pick up the wrong one, but it just it always got the closest one because exactly like you said, it's twenty seconds in the local site plus whatever it takes to get to any remote site. So farther ones are always longer. that is a good question though. But yeah, again, test and you may want to up your average or the number of, of yep. uh, time you call that ping so that your average is a little more consistent. Mm -hmm. Also, cool. Do we have any other questions? Dear Lex and Stephen, I get a lot of computer unreachable errors. I have found that the machine is actually not on, but inventory shows it as being online. It seems to be with computers that have Broadcom, Nextstream, Gigabit, Gigabit, Ethernet, Nix. Thanks, Curtis J. Well, that's, that's pretty concise. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> huh. hey, yeah, I'm gonna go. Hmm. So yeah, that is a. Hmm. Is the uh, the Nick answering the ping? I mean, Colby, you come across this error? Uh, I know there's uh, something with Intel. Uh, we have a an option somewhere. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. Like VPro will still respond or something like that. So that's th right. this could VPro. be something like that. Okay. You might you might want to check see what your BIOS settings on VPro are because it may be that Nick may be answering as opposed to the. I've, I've so. also seen problems with like a USB NIC, um, just to having weird behavior sometimes, or even docs having weird behavior. Sometimes it's simply a firmware update. That might be an easy answer. You've already tried. But uh, yeah, that's another one that's uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to say we're stumped on that. Uh, Maybe. Kind of. I, I would never know. admit that, but no. I might feel that way. I would totally admit it, man. Oh, I yeah. get stumped all the time. Yeah, so. me too. That's true. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> so. Anyway, guys, a uh, couple things to take away. You know, there are ways to get files out to remote sites. And remember, this is a site, not a remote machine. Mm -hmm. Remote machine, use your agent for that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, remote sites, go Final ahead. thought about the agent. Yeah. Because we do have this agent coming out that's able to deploy. 
Um, the agent doesn't work this way. It's going to grab the file directly from the internet, from our servers. Mm -hmm. um, so this is specifically for like caching at a, at a local site. At a local site. So, And again, you know, get your PowerShell, test it. We put the files out there for you. Give it a whirl, guys. And yeah. if you find something cooler, better, send it on in. Yeah, We'd definitely. Love to see it. We'd love to hear what you, what you guys are doing. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Kurt M. and Angel P., winners of PDQ Swag. Please send us your information at webcast at pdq.com. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.